of wind for Ipswich that they desperately needed and I think they were pretty good value for it as well. Um, a fantastic goal by Sammy Smodzic. Um, again, I may be mispronouncing his name. Good then, player, uh, him, Dan. Really, oh, really good, good player. player. Oh, really good oh, player. Look, I mean, the, one of the reasons why um, Stephen Kenny had to go as a Republic of Ireland manager is that he just wouldn't pick Smodzic. And it was a time last year where he was on 30 goals, playing as not a striker in, in, all right, in, the, in the championship. Just wasn't getting a look in. But he can play. He really can play. And Liam Delap, of course, got his sixth goal in his first 10 starts at this level. He's for brilliant. Ipswich Town. I thought your um, point and, earlier on him was brilliant. It's, oh, he, yeah. I, I think he... Um, he already looked. He already looks uh, like a fully fledged Premier League player, and that, that, that's saying something at this stage. He's, he's going to be a real player. I mean, I don't see any doubt about that. There's nothing where I look and think, "Oh, he's struggling with this. He's struggling with that." Ironically, even the first game of the season, I don't know if you remember it, Dan, the uh, against Liverpool when Arnie Schlott made the change at half time to cope with him. Yeah. He brought Canati on for Kwanzaa because Kwanzaa was having a tough time trying to cope with him physically. Who's obviously a decent player himself. And Canati come on and phys- you know, had to get physical with him. And ever since then, Canati's gone, yeah. you know, his form yeah. and stayed he, in the he, team. But De Lapp is some player. He's one of those when we'll be, we'll be having the pub conversation about which uh, footballing sons are better than their footballing fathers. Yeah, so that's we, true. I call it the Johan Cruyff <laughs> conversation, if you like. And poor old Geordie. Um, although, although do you know what, Dan? You are spot on with that. But Geordie was decent. People, oh, yeah, people, yeah, people yeah. don't give him enough credit. That mm. year when Alaves got to the final and yeah, we beat yeah. him, he, he was, was outstanding. Because yeah. we used to, we did videos on him and he was... Ble- oh, really? Looked, you studied oh, him before. my God. He, he's, be- he's never going to be as good as his dad, was he? No matter Nobody how good could, he was. No, no. no. Um, and then, you know, Frank Lampard Sr. would admit, I think, that his own son had a better career mm. than him. It's really good fun, though, um, talking about this. And I think but already Rory Delap must be thinking that his place at the top of the footballing pinnacle of the Delap family is probably under threat already. But look, football, as often, so often, is about the losers. Um, Danny, I had a, a long time to do this discussion on the podcast that I do earlier today. These are the facts. Spurs have won five and lost five. One draw. The games they've won, they've won handily, mashing teams up with three and four goals. The games they've lost, they've lost by a single goal. Uh, how can a team, Danny? I've, I mean, I've, can, all right, let me ask you a sorry for question. Have you ever seen a team with a greater disparity between when they're playing well and playing badly? No, it's it's um, it's a real strange one because when they're good, they're really good. <laughs> And you watch them and you think, ah, they've turned the corner. This is, you know... Ah, every- the famous corner. <laughs> yeah, and ev- everyone's looking sharp and there's a belief and there's a sharp a confidence about them and a strut. And then all of a sudden, you see a performance where it's... I, I The only thing I can think is that they're so used to doing one thing only is that they haven't got yet the wisdom in the game, the players I'm talking about, to, mm-hmm. to change... In game management, we call it, don't we? From a coaching point of view, but from a player's point of view, there's times in a game where you need a f- one or two to change it and change the mentality. And that comes with, I always use the same two. We, I was very, very lucky at Liverpool. We had Deep Mahaman, who came to us with a good bit of international experience and playing in two European leagues already, been at Newcastle, been at Munich. And Gary Mack came. And the in game sometimes when you feel like you're getting you can't get control of the game and you're all over the place and you can see you know things aren't going well. Those two manage the game for Julio. Honestly, manage me, manage Stevie G, managed everyone around Michael, Emil, whoever it was. You get in here, you drop in here, you tuck in here, you do this, take less touches, whatever. Constantly organising, barking, slowing the game down, getting free kicks, telling us to calm down. Every every little aspect and detail, they talk you through it. And it it was so educational. And it, it saved us games and points. Because mm. we'd be under the cosh sometimes or having a bad spell. Nobody knew how to get out of it, but they did. And I don't see Tottenham having that in games. It's just, right, we know, we know what we've got to do. The fullbacks are flying. We're going to try and play out from the back, play our way through. Try and dominate teams, be nice and bold, press high. If they get through us, we won't, you know, we won't change. Mm. And the coach has some responsibility in that. But when you've played in Europe in the week, and this is the other thing as well, when you've played in Europe in the week, I know they did it last year, but some of the players are new and the opposition's a bit better this year. So when you're playing in Europe, which is, I know he's mixed it up and 
few of them have a rest. Yeah. But it's not just the playing, the travelling, the less training, the less... You've, you've got a real strong mentality mm. as a group of players to keep churning out performances and results. And I'm not sure at the minute I'm seeing... Because a lot of those bad results have come after European games. I think that's right, Dan, isn't it? Yeah, they're, well, they're, what they they're really have, What the they really have come is... Um, uh, yeah, they, uh, they also come on the... Um, they've lost all the games in front of these international breaks as well. And I'm going to say it, there's several international captains in that team. And in the case of, for instance, Christian Romero, um, I don't think I'll be sued for saying that he 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 really values playing for Argentina. He does, yeah. Um, and may have been distracted. I don't know. Um, but uh, look, let me ask you a different question, Darren. Um, we know that the Premier League each year more and more clubs have 18, 20, 23, 25 really excellent footballers. The level of coaching, I mean, Amarim is only adding to that as well. Virtually all of the really good coaches, not all of them, but virtually all of them who are any good, have got anything about them, are playing in the Premier League. I'm going to ask you a question that I don't know the answer to, but I'm going to be brutal because I'm biased, you know. I want these players to do well. Do Spurs have good enough players to be, you know, parading around you know, members of the Super League and, and talking about finishing the top four most years. <laughs> uh, well, the two, the two are slightly different because obviously when they had aspirations to uh, be in the Super League, they didn't have the squad they do now. I think what you said a second ago, Danny, is more the case. There isn't good enough balance in that team. There are lots of young players in that team, but I don't see enough experience in that team, particularly defensive experience particularly defensive midfield experience. I don't see enough depth in the squad that when a Mickey van der Ven isn't available, there is somebody else who can step in and keep people's eye on the ball, but is happy enough to be on the bench because they've got the right temperament and be a good squad member in terms of leadership, in terms of the way they prepare for games, in terms of the way they can manage the workload between Europe and the Premier League. And I've seen a lot of Tottenham teams over the years where they have had that balance, particularly under Maurizio Pochettino, that helped them to get to the Champions League final. Now, some people might say, well, the second, what, third of that, third, sorry, second, third, thirds of that season, they weren't great, which would be true. But the fact mm -hmm. is that they managed to get to a point in their recent history where they were 90 minutes away from doing something incredible. Um I just don't see the balance in the squad at the moment that says to me that they can do what the head coach wants them to do. And I think that's a big part of why the fans are not happy. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think there's a there's a, sometimes a misconception that age is an indicator of wisdom and game intelligence mm. and communication skills. Mm. It's not always that way. Mm. Um, I also think, you know, Tottenham have got good legs, got good competition in midfield areas, Ben Tanker, Saar, Basuma, players like that. It's, it's, it's more understanding in-game football, football sometimes in the game, irrelevant, irrelevant of what the coach wants you to do, irrelevant of what the coach has talked to you about doing, and insists that you do, you, don't, you can change it. Yeah, but see, when, when, when Harry Redknapp, for example, was at Spurs, he had a, a lot of... He had a lot of legs, a lot of younger players, but he brought in players that had been around the block, players he could rely on, players he knew in a difficult moment would be able to get players over the line, players in particular whose preparation was good, whose leadership ability was good, whose mm. communication skills were good. And they got into the Champions League and they were thereabouts with him. And I actually, I think letting him go was a bad decision by the club because mm. I think they went backwards for a while after that. But, you, you, you know, you're right. Some, in, in some cases, you can have young players who do have that ability to step up. But I think Jose Mourinho was right when he came to the club and he said, there are a lot of nice boys here, but are there, is there enough leadership? Is there enough streetwise ability to go mm. and dig in when you need to? And I don't think Spurs have that. They've got quality, they've got technique, they've got good young players and, and sort of middling players, but I don't know if they've got enough experience. And the Premier League is brutal. Is if brutal. you have if you have weaknesses, um, you will be exposed. Um, and Danny, you you uh, always refer to your you've got lots of um, friends who support Spurs. How's the mood among them? Well, funnily enough, <laughs> funnily enough, I haven't spoken to um, any of them since the weekend. <laughs> I, I would 
I sensed, I listened to a phone in actually the other day. Um, there's a real sense of frustration because when you watch, you, you talked about it before, the, the, the extreme performances, you know, the, yeah. the, the hot and the cold is very unlike most teams. You normally you get a runner good and a runner bad. They can be good and bad in the same week. Mm. And this is what's really Same frustra- match, Danny. Same match. And this is what's Brighton. really, really annoying um, Tottenham supporters. It's a, it's a conundrum. Because right now they're leaving and in, they're going into an international break, disappointed, frustrated, angry, um, and bemused. I think the majority of Tottenham supporters. Yeah. I think they're words that are fair. And unless they come back and have a good run, they are gonna they are gonna struggle to find themselves being competitive for the top four with this inconsistent form. And just finally. Somebody has pulled me up about referring to Nottingham Forest as Notts Forest. And I apologise for that because I've been told off about that before and I know it's disrespectful. So, D. Neil, Douglas, whoever it is, I can't even... D. D. Neil? From D. Neil, yeah, in Douglas. I apologise. Yeah, Nottingham Forest fans, they're obsessed with that, aren't they? Let's be honest. Um, um, I, I don't know. Because it's because Notts County, that's the name of the club and, and that's their rivals and all the rest of it. And with all due respect to the uh, the rivalry they also enjoy with Derby County. Um, yeah, Spurs, they find themselves in 10th place. If they could have beaten previously winless Ipswich, they would have been third. And the conversation would have been very, very different. But if they put didn't. some maybes, then. Yep. And let, let me just also say, um, and um, again, I, I said this on another platform earlier on. Forgive me if I'm repeating myself. Um, the fixture computer has been very kind to Spurs. They still have to play... Manchester City twice, Liverpool twice, Chelsea twice, away at Arsenal, away at West Ham. Um, so, you know, grounds where they don't necessarily do particularly well all the time. Are you worried, so they Worried about, about in, insofar as, yeah, I want them to be better. I want them to do well. I, I like many of the players. Um, I think, you know, I think Poster Coglu would be somebody I could sit down and talk to, but he wouldn't look in my eyes, of course, but you, you know what I mean. Um <laughs> Uh, but but you, you you know you can't keep making the same mistakes over and over again without somebody having to take responsibility. Mm. And Son saying this is unacceptable, and the manager saying it's unacceptable. Only they can do something about it. And they've got a real difficult run of fixtures coming up. In which City next. And do yeah. just that. Absolutely, absolutely. Danny, yeah. but which which performance? I know you've got to move on. Which performance yeah. is worse? This one at the weekend or the Brighton one, where you were two 0 up at half time and went on to lose three two. Oh, I think you'd have to say the Brighton one. Brighton are yes. a better team than Ipswich, but to capitulate at this level, professional sport, um, to and once they conceded the first goal, was it Danny Welbeck who got it? Once they conceded the first goal, you knew that was only going one way, and to know that about a team who you watch regularly was very difficult. This one, they were mugged a little bit by Ipswich Town, who said, we're going to do exactly as Jamie O'Hara said there. If you're playing Spurs, if you can just stick in the game, by hook or by crook or by time wasting, in the case of um, several recent visitors to Spurs, if you can stick in the game, sooner or later they'll give you something. And so what you get is a circus act overhead kick, well done, Sammy Smodzik, and a kind of Spurs. Spurs had two touches in their own six yard box before um, uh, Young Delap scored. So, you know, they will give you something. Danny's you blaming the got... dark arts for Tottenham's <laughs> well, got... problems. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Oh, I see what switch. you mean about the time wasting. Well, that's a separate story. Very quickly on that. Time wasting and tactical fouling have got worse, of course, because of five substitutes. The yellow cards mean Come nothing now. Come on, Danny. He's got them. nothing to do with that. Your manager even said himself, if you guys had scored the first goal, you wouldn't have had to worry about the time wasting. Oh, well, I'm not going to disagree with that. Those two things are not interlinked. The time wasting, you'll see. Look, Darren, I'm going to... I'm going to right, here I come. Let me just load both barrels. <laughs> Darren, Darren, you get into the football grounds for free. You're not paying 60 quid to watch 44 minutes of football. For it. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.